All right, hello and good evening. My name is Jared Hansen. I wanted to make this video as an update to my last video, which is showing you how to convert or how to make custom edits to um, a thing I first found uh, quickly, easily, for free. Um, we're going to use all free software. I'm going to go step by step with you. Uh, I'm even sharing the files, etc. So this should be pretty fun. These are the basic steps here. <laughs> um, and I actually made this whole video a second ago and I forgot to end it with saving as a mesh. So if you're used to watching this video, one of the ones that have viewed this, um, this is no longer as relevant since there was an update to Fusion 360. Fusion 360 did a pretty game-changing um, update for their mesh workspace and I'm here to show you all that. So don't worry, uh, we're gonna go through it. All right. Um, First, thanks to everybody commenting. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool to be, I guess, helping out. So um, definitely want to keep that going. Let's see. First, you can download Fusion 360 here through this link. I will link all these uh, in the video we're making now together. Uh, I'll link that in the description. So uh, if you clicked on this link, it would bring you to uh, sign in for Fusion 360 personal use. So that's great. And if you go to my Thingiverse file here. It'll bring you up and Thingiverse. My internet's being slow, but don't worry, I've already got it pulled up. Um, so it'll bring you here where you can download this caliber mount. And I added the one where there's no holes in it. That's what we'll do during this video. We'll add uh, screw holes. So it's a very simple edit that we can do together. Um, and you can use these files to do it step by step. So first step is to, of course, once you've got Fusion 360, now we're going to download the uh, Thingiverse file. So you're going to click Download All Files. You're going to wait the five seconds. Don't let that fool you into thinking nothing's happening. Once that's passed, um, you'll see the zip folder down here. Go ahead and click that. And don't be confused by this WinRAR. I tried it out, this program. I'm just going to get rid of it. But, all right, so we've opened up the compress file. I'm going to go ahead and click on the files folder and you'll see three files. So you have the Fusion 360 document in case you want it. Um, you also have the caliber holder that does have the screw holes and then the caliber without holes. So what you'll need to do is remove this from the zip folder and the easiest way to do that is just to dry, uh, open up another file tab and drag and drop that to your desktop. So let me drop it to my desktop. You can see I've already got one named that from doing this video a second ago. Go ahead and place it. So if I'm on my desktop now, you'll see that um, STL file, which is traditionally what's found on thing ever. So you might get an OBJ file. I have a video on how to convert OBJ files to STL files in case you're interested, but it's not super important. Okay, now we got our files. Let's jump in and get to it. So. Here's again what I did a second ago. Um, I'm just going to exit that. So I have a brand new file. And the first thing we'll want to do is just save it wherever you want. So you can click on your data panel if you saw that. Go to wherever you want. I'm going to go into uh, just my 3D print folder. And then we'll close that and click in the workspace and type Control S for save. Type, uh, name it whatever you want. You name it name. Save. Um, okay, now you can see name is up here, and it's there. That was probably a confusing name um, for a video, but whatever. Uh, okay, so first up, uh, that's the question I got most, or I got asked most, is um, what happened to our using Do Not Capture Design History Mesh? You don't have to do that anymore, um, typically for most features. So, used to we had the right click and click Do Not Capture Design History. The Fusion 360 is stepping up. As you can see, we've already got the Mesh Workspace tab, uh, and we're still capturing design history. That's all great. Don't let that confuse you, though, regardless. So uh, go over to your document settings, drop that down, and change it to millimeters if you're not currently in millimeters. Click OK. See, now I'm in millimeters, and uh, we are ready to go. Millimeters are best to work with when you're working with um, 3D print files. So 
You can do this two ways. We're going to insert the STL file, then go first file. So you could go to insert here over on the solids tab, go to insert, insert mesh. That would do it. Or that can be found as well in the mesh workspace tab. Uh, go drop down create and insert mesh. Either one will work. So click that. Navigate to where you store that file. And I'm going to click it and click open. So again, we're in millimeters. And we're going to click OK. As you can see, it's a mesh file. But you can confirm that over here in your body. So anger without holes. Uh, if you see the mesh icon there, the, it looks like this icon. <laughs> uh, that's just signifying that that body is a mesh body. Uh, another note, I'm using a 3D mouse, so that's why my views move this way. Uh, you'll need to use the view cube up here if you do not have a uh, 3D mouse. But no worries, it's pretty straightforward. So, moving on, uh, let's go ahead and prep this for edit. So whatever types of edit you want, there's actually some really cool ones now, and I'd like to do some videos on that, combining different ones, and maybe one, but we'll make this one simple. So, drop down modify. And our goal is to convert this to a more traditional CAD model. You don't have to do this all the time, but it's just good practice, typically. Uh, and I don't want to confuse anybody with uh, the different scenarios. So go to Convert Mesh here. And then for the body, you can either click the body over here, or you can click the actual body in the workspace. Go ahead and select that. And we'll go ahead and do it as parametric. And OK. So you can see we've actually captured converting it to a B-Rep in our timeline. Used to, you can do that, but that's pretty cool. So if you look over at the body here, you'll see now it's a gray cylinder, which is Fusion's way of signifying that this is now a B-Rep and a solid body. So that's great. It still looks like a mesh body, kind of, uh, but we're going to clean these up. So for this one, we want to add some holes here. And the way we do that is simply we could, there's two ways. We could simply jump back and just start editing directly. We don't have to clean up this uh, body anymore to start working with it. As you can see, I'll add a hole. Um, if I added a hole, it's in my design history. You can go through time, back when it was a mesh file, back before it had a hole. Um, but for me, I typically like to clean up the faces I'm working with in the model. So. I'll show that method as well. I'm going to right click on that hole and delete it. And let's jump back to the surface tab. So one bummer is to clean these up, you do have to turn off your design history. So right click on name, do not capture design history, continue. And that is so we have access to the merge tool. The merge tool is pretty cool if you want to clean up the file. So let's merge these faces. I'm going to select two. And OK. You can see it greatly reduced uh, the complexity there. I'm going to go ahead and Control Z so we can see that again. Merge, select two faces. OK. OK. So that's great. Let's go ahead and merge again. OK. And now we just have these three. Merge one more time with that. Enter. And you know what, that's good enough for me. I'll do it one more just for the video's sake. Oops. Surface tab, merge. Okay, now we got a nice clean uh, face to work with. And um, let's make sure to turn our capture design history back on. So, capture design history. I right clicked on the name and click capture design history. You can see it's back up here on timeline. And I'm going to jump to the solids tab. Okay, again, we can just start editing directly. If I wanted to grab the whole tool, I could just throw holes on it uh, randomly. But if you want to uh, make these more accurate, here's how you do so. I'm going to go ahead and delete that whole feature. And I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch and select the face I want to work with. This will allow me to set reference points for the whole tool to align. Okay. I'm going to go ahead 
and grab the line tool. How much time are we at? 10 minutes? Okay, I'll show two ways to do this because it's actually pretty simple. So you can drag it along a feature. So, oops, we're at this top edge here. You see it's locking on and I'm wanting to drag along it. And if you see that triangle symbol uh, near my cursor, that's signifying that I'm at the midpoint for that edge. So I could go ahead and start my line here. And go ahead and drag down. And you can see it's locking at 90 degrees near my cursor. You can see the right angle icon, uh, blue uh, icon there. And I can drag down and select this other edge. Okay. Um, this will allow us to see where the middle between these two points is. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a work geometry. So select that line and then type the letter X as in x-ray. So that turned it into work geometry. You could also right click and do, or sorry, construction geometry. So normal construction. Uh, yeah. Anyways, let's do another line at the midpoint here. This will be our mirror line in a minute. So there are two different ways we can do this. And you see I just set that up in the midpoint, same icon. And I'll do one more line so we have a midpoint. Uh, for half of it. Okay. I go to create point, drag it along this line, and you can see it's let me select the midpoint here. So I know I'm midway between the midpoint of the entire uh, face and the mirror line. So, not to get too confusing there. Okay. You could go to mirror tool, select that feature, that point. Select this line as your mirror line, select OK, and you can see it mirrored another point here. That's one way to create two holes uh, that are mirrored. And I'll show you that. And then I'll show you a little bit easier way. So let's go to the finish sketch check mark. Click finish sketch. And you should jump back to your solids tab. Okay, we're going to grab the hole tool, select that point. If we wanted to do both at once, we'd select multiple holes. Select both points. You can see we've added two holes here. Let's do a counter bore. Let's say we want, let's say the head of our bolt was five millimeters. So you can see we've added two uh, well spaced holes here. But let's also say you're doing a lot of these and it's not efficient to sketch these all out. Well, uh, I got rid of that whole feature by deleting it. What I could do is mirror the feature itself. So I'm going to turn my sketch back on, visibility, by clicking that icon there. I'm going to add the whole feature back to one sketch point, click OK. And then uh, I could either mirror it, pattern it, uh, etc. But we would need a way to mirror it. So it's going to ask us for a mirror plane. So how we do that is go to construction, our construct, grab mid plane, select the two faces here, and then uh, mid plane is going to automatically generate between those two faces. Go ahead and select OK. And now let's do mirror. So we're in the solid tab. We're not in the sketch, so mirror is going to mirror, uh, you know, faces, bodies, features, components, whatever we tell it to. So I'm going to go to features because I want to mirror this whole. So for the object, I'm going to go ahead and click that hole, which is in my uh, timeline down here of that feature. And for the mirror plane, I'm going to select that uh, mid plane we generated a second ago. For, you could do different compute options, but this one's going to be fine. Adjust. I don't want to confuse anybody, so click OK. And you can see we've created two. Uh, again, uh, you could do that in a sketch simpler for two holes, but if you want to do a lot of holes or maybe like a cool um, mesh layout for different geometry, um, mirroring, rectangular patterns are all great. Okay, we are almost done. We're, we've edited. Let's see if there's anything else on the list. Save as a mesh. That's all I forgot on the last video. Okay. Yes, let's save this. I'm going to go ahead and type Control S just to update my saved file. Why not? And then I'll double click on the body here. You can see that. Uh, you can also just click up here, right click, 
there's save as mesh. So uh, we're saving as millimeter and clicking OK. And you can see I'll just save it to my desktop as updated. Uh, there's a cooler way to do that, I'll show that in a second, but let's go ahead and confirm. I go to desktop and find updated. Saved as a 3MF. Okay, we probably want to save as a STL, just again, not the confusing by that are used to STL, so let's double click that again. Save as mesh. See the format was 3MF. Uh, typically, most people want STL uh, in this format, the ASC2, so. Hello. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, okay. And I'm going to go ahead and, well, I can't find that one, so let's try this updated to updated STL version. You can see we have updated 3MF, but now we have the updated STL version. I could open that in whatever slicer program you're using. So if I open it in mine, you would see that's there. Okay, the last way I'll show to do that, double click, right click, save as STL, or save as mesh. And one thing I love about Fusion is you can set it up to go directly to your print utility, which I've set mine up for uh, custom flash print. And when I click that, it automatically pops up over here on my other screen. So it went directly to it. I had to save it to my computer, which is great. Uh, less trash files just stacking up. So cool. That is it. Again, if you get caught up, feel free to reach out on Discord. Uh, I'll link that in the description. Um, hope someone found this helpful. If I missed anything or anything, feel free to let me know. Um, and again, I know there's simpler ways to do a lot of this stuff and a lot of it isn't super necessary. I just want to make a quick, easy video that everyone can get the gist. Um, okay, thanks.